So far we've talked about antiderivatives or indefinite integrals and we've looked at some relatively simple cases but what was happening in each case is that we were essentially reversing one of our derivative properties. The same is going to be true in this module but now what we want to do is start looking at reversing some more complicated properties or taking the the indefinite integral of some more complicated problems. So the first pro um, technique we can talk about is integration by substitution. And in particular, it's used whenever we try to integrate composite functions. Or another way to say that is the, that integration by substitution is used to undo the chain rule. So if we look at the two example problems that were given, in each case we can see that we have a composite function. We have, in the first example, some quantity being raised to the second power. So we could think of this as just some quantity u being squared. So rather than just that variable being squared, we have this more complex statement. And also as a nice end result, if we were to take the derivative of 7x plus 7, that result would be 7, which matches up with this other piece of the function. That'll become important as we move on. Uh, if we look at the second piece, there a second problem that we have here. We have e to the 5x, which we could, cons we could consider writing as something like e to the u. <clears throat> so in each of these cases, what we have is a composite function, some function being plugged into another one. In this case, we have 5x being plugged into e to the u. In this case, we have 7x plus 7 being plugged into u squared. So for those cases, we'll use integration by substitution, which we'll start introducing shortly. The other technique we'll look at is integration by parts. So this technique will be used whenever we try to integrate the product of two functions. So in the two problems that we have below, we can see that we have the integral in this case of a function x times another function, natural log of x, dx. So what we have is the product of these two functions, which would be our indicator that what we want to use is integration by parts. In the second problem here, we have the integral of x times the second function e to the x. So again, anytime we have the product of two functions, we would want to th think about using integration by parts. Whenever we have composite functions, we'll want to think about using integration by substitution. So we'll take a look at integration by substitution with some more direct examples, a couple of trickier problems, and then tackle integration by parts.